Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vineyardchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. Now here's this week's message. Not again. Man, talk about being caught in the middle, right? That's not a good situation. Well, welcome to Vineyard Community Church. I'm so glad you're here with us today. We survived the tropical storm. We made it. I think anyways, maybe it's still more to come. I don't know. But uh, today, Pastor Andy and Sharon, our, our amazing senior pastors, have given me the honor to speak with you today. And I believe God is going to encourage us, challenge us, and inspire us all. So if you are taking notes or following along on your outline, you can even live tweet with us to at Vineyard VA. You can title this speech, Caught in the Middle. Caught in the Middle. Now, here's a story in the Bible about a man who's caught in the middle of being healed by Jesus or actually even risking his own life. Check this out in Luke chapter 6. It's on your outlines. It says, On another Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and was teaching. And a man, a man who was there, a man, I found it, okay. And a man was there whose right hand was deformed. Everyone remember that, right hand whose right hand was deformed. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or destroy life? He looked around at all of them and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. And his hand was completely restored. Now, this man was caught in the middle because it was the Sabbath, and you weren't allowed to work on the Sabbath, either good or bad. So here you see, so Jesus is offering him this opportunity to be healed, but he has the religious leaders behind him, and, and he knows an a, 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 a act of work on the Sabbath is a sin that can lead to death, that's punishable for death. So here's the picture of Jesus right here, the religious leaders on the other side, and the man caught in the middle. What decision does he make? And I have a question for you today. Have you ever been caught in the middle of something that you didn't really want to be caught in the middle of? Like, for example, like an argument between your wife and your mom. <laughs> That's not a good one, right? You can't win with that one. Or maybe uh, at work, a direct report and a supervisor arguing back and forth about things, and you don't know whose side to take because you don't know which one has more implications on your job, so you just kind of say nothing. You know, but you're caught in the middle. See, I've been uh, married now for two years, and, uh, which has been awesome. It's been a pretty big life change. Um, but when I was single, I was a very independent guy, very over-the-top independent. I did what I want, when I want it, with who I want it. I did me. I was all about doing what I wanted, right? And I would hear stories from some guys I know who are, who are married, like, hey, man, it doesn't stay like that once you get married. You know, you got to go home. I said, no more, no more guys nights? No more guys nights. I'm like, no, that's not me. And I would look at them and laugh. I said, that's not going to be me. No one's going to change me. I'm Jacob Gaines for crying out loud. My wife ain't going to change me. Okay, two years later, I'm not as independent as I used to be. <laughs> I got asked permission for things and stuff, you know. I was like, what? Was like, what the heck? So I, but I had these moments, right, that I'm like ready to recapture my independence and like go do what I want. So there's this one night, we had a guy's night. We were watching the, uh, the Brock Lesnar UFC fight. And Aaron was like, yeah, go enjoy yourself. When does it start? And I said, well, it starts at 8. 
But what I didn't tell her was that the main card fights don't start till 10. And the Brock Lesnar fight probably won't start till midnight. But I did kind of tell the truth. (laughs) (laughs) So midnight comes, and then I get the text message. I don't get the, how's it going? Who won the fight? You having a good time with the guys? I don't get those. I get the text message that says, where are you at? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you ever read a text message. You can, you, and you can tell the tone of the text message. It's not like a slap in the face. Like, where are you at? Oh, I'm here. You know? <laughs> she, she, and then she started saying, oh, I, you didn't tell me you're going to be out this late. I don't like being by, that, by, by, by myself, you know, at the house by myself. And, and so here I am. I'm caught in the middle. I either stay and watch the fight or I have to go home. I'm caught in the middle. I either stay and watch Brock Lesnar beat up some people or I go home and get beat up by my wife like she's Brock Lesnar. (laughs) I'm caught in the middle. What do I do? So she ended up texting me and she let me stay. (laughs) She let me stay. I'm independent. I chose to stay. No, I didn't. (laughs) Also, recently in my life, since I like sharing my life stories with you guys, um, recently in my life, I have gotten swim lessons, right? I haven't been able to swim my whole life. Exactly. Be excited for me. Okay. Um, And I have this awesome swim coach at ODU um, who's been working with me. But she's like a miracle worker because literally if the pool was deeper than four feet, you didn't see me in the pool. I wasn't risking my life on that. It, but, but now, after a few lessons, she's taught me how to float on my back, how to float on my stomach. I got the Michael Phelps thing going. You know, I'm, I'm ready for Olympic gold. You know, it's been great. See, but check this out. The other day, she wanted me to um, swim on my back from the four feet to the 12 feet. And on the outside, I was like, yeah, coach, I got it. Can do that. No problem. Let me get it. On the inside, I was like, I'm going to die today, you know. (laughs) Where's my floaty? (laughs) Where's my rubber ducky? You know, I don't, I was freaking out, right? I didn't know if I could make it. And then, um, so I get in position, you know, I'm going to do it. You got to get your hips up, your head back, you got to kick your feet, and you got to like do this thing like with your arms, like go under the water, you got to get in the water. And, uh, And here it goes, I'm going and I'm moving, and I'm moving, and I'm kicking, and water is getting in my eyes, and water is getting in my ear, and I'm trying to keep my, hip, keep my hips up, and I'm doing it, and I'm doing it, and I'm tired, and I'm tired. And I'm like, oh, Lord, save me, Lord. <laughs> and I look over, and I see the, the markers, and I'm in the eight feet. The four feet, the 12 feet, in the eight feet, and last time I checked, I can't stand up in the eight feet. <laughs> I was caught in the middle. Caught in the middle. And here's the truth, though. Almost every day we find ourselves caught in the middle between decisions that we have to make. We find ourselves with these opportunities and these decisions that we have to make. And I believe living for Jesus isn't just about our actions and doing things, but I believe a big portion of living for Jesus is about our reactions to life. How are we going to respond to circumstances in life that don't go the way that we uh, want them to go? See, I believe the world is looking at the church and looking to see how the church will respond in difficult times. How are we going to respond? Jesus says this. He says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. See, Jesus doesn't say, you might have some issues. You might have some problems. There may be some things that don't go the way you want. But if you join a connect group, you're good. (laughs) No, he doesn't say that. Jesus says, in this world, you are going to have troubles. Things aren't going to go the way you want. But you can take heart, take courage, because I overcame the world. I defeated the world. See, in Deuteronomy 30, it says this. It says, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you, that I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life. Choose life. See, 
The question is, how are we going to respond when we're caught in the middle? What are we going to do in the middle? See, what happens when we are caught in the middle of promise and sin? Which actually leads me to my tweetable thought today. My tweetable thought today is this. We must move towards Jesus when we're caught in the middle. We must move towards Jesus when we're caught in the middle at Vineyard VA. And you can post that on all of our social media platforms or tell someone at work this week when you see them if you don't have one. If you don't have a job, I don't tell somebody. I don't know. <laughs> um, we must move towards Jesus when we're caught in the middle. See, it's in the middle we have to, we have to make a choice to pick Jesus to move towards him. Now, here's another story in the Bible that I'm going to share today. That'll be my primary story about a group of people who are caught in the middle. You may actually be very familiar with this story. It, God sends Moses to Egypt to set the Israelite slaves free. They were slaves for hundreds of years. And now after a demonstration of God's power and might, uh, God sets them free from the Egyptians. Moses Moses takes the people and they're marching towards the promised land. They're marching towards the land flowing with milk and honey. I don't really know what that means, but it sounds good, I guess. I guess in today's translation, it would be the land flowing with unlimited Starbucks coffee <laughs> and Chick-fil-A. <laughs> but then there's, so they're marching to this land, but then there's an interruption in the plan. Check this out in Exodus 14. It says this. When the king of Egypt was told that the people have fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with them. He took 600 of the best chariots along with the other chariots of Egypt with, with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. See, they're marching towards their freedom. They're marching towards their promise. Things are going the way they want. Finally, we're free. Finally, God answered our prayers. Finally, we're progressing in life. But then they get to the Red Sea and they look up and they can't cross the sea. Then they look behind them and Egypt's right back on them. I don't know if you ever had like finally moments in your life, like finally things are going the way you want. But every time I have a finally moment, it feels like I have a, oh, dang, something else moment. <laughs> like, like, finally, the bills are up to date, but now the car messed up. <laughs> finally, one kid is going good, but now my other kid is going crazy. <laughs> finally, works the way I want, but my marriage is struggling. See, we always have these moments when we have these finally things are going good, but then we find ourselves stuck back in the middle. How can we move towards God when we're caught in the middle? How can we move towards freedom when we don't know where to go? Today I have three points that I want to share with you to help you navigate how to get out of the middle. And I believe if you apply these points to your life, it will change your life forever. Point number one today is this. Don't forget the promise. Don't forget the promise. See, we can't forget the promise. We can't doubt in the dark seasons of life what God promised us in the light. We can't doubt in the hard seasons what God said, I'm going to do with you when, when seasons were going good. See, I just want to encourage some people in here today, and I just want to say your promise hasn't changed. See, life circumstances haven't gone the way you want it. Some life choices led to some not good things, but you still got breath in your lungs. And if you, aren't, if you ain't dead, then guess what? God's not done with your life. God has things for you. You're, don't forget your promise. 
See, the kids may be messing up right now, but guess what? Don't forget the promise. Your marriage may be struggling right now, but don't forget the promise. Your finances aren't going great. Don't forget the promise. You're single and you're ready to mingle and ain't no one to mingle with. Don't forget the promise. God still has someone and something for you. See, we cannot forget the promise. Because when I read the story about the Israelites, I can't help but see myself in them. And maybe as I tell the story to you today, you might see yourself in them too. See, they're marching towards freedom. They're singing freedom songs. They're going to the land flowing with milk and honey. Don't know what it means still, but it sounds good. Things are going good, but then the moment things go good, the old things begin to creep up into their lives. The old habits begin to creep up into their lives. See, it's in the middle of sin and promise that God will challenge our struggles and our bad habits. See, it's in the middle of, of sin and promise that God wants to do some, some construction in our lives that he wants to do something different. Check this out. Exodus 14, it says, They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Wait a second. That is not how that went down. The Israelites were in slavery for hundreds of years, and for hundreds of years they were calling out to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, begging and pleading for him to lead them out of this place, to bring them back to the promise. They were God's chosen people who were caught in captivity. Then Moses comes and sets them free. And, but what happens is this. What happens is when we're caught in the middle our struggles and our bad habits begin to come out more clearly. When stress and pressure is against us, we begin to make decisions that we shouldn't make. See, Egypt represents slavery, being captive, no freedom. For us, we can relate that to sin, broken relationships, poor choices, bad habits, addictions. And even though it represents all those things, sometimes we still find ourselves wanting to go back to Egypt. And I asked myself, why would we want to go back to things that we know we don't want? Because sometimes when we can't see what God is doing, at least Egypt is familiar. At least bad relationships is what I'm used to. At least heartaches is what I've grown accustomed to. And even though I don't want it, I'll keep going back to it. Because it's at least it's familiar. And maybe I'm just speaking for myself today when I say I find myself in that place way too often. Going back to things I don't want when God says, I put before you life. Put before you something better. See, they didn't want to go back to Egypt, but they were afraid. They were caught in the middle of sin and promise. And promise looked like a giant sea that they couldn't cross. And sin well, sin looked familiar. It was comfortable. It's what they were used to. And it's our human nature to pick familiar things, even if they're hurtful things. Even if they're hurtful. See, I found myself, check this out, I found myself when I was in the middle of doing something that I know I didn't want to do, I would find myself praying this prayer. God, take this away from me. Take the temptation away from me. Take this thing away from me. See, but then I discovered when sin is against my back, when I'm faced with choices that I know I shouldn't, be, I shouldn't do, it's actually one of my best opportunities to move towards God. You're like, Pastor Jacob, what are you talking about? See, when we're faced between life and death, when we're faced between what God wants and sin, it's our best opportunity to move towards what God has for us. See, I changed my prayer from God, take this away from me, to God, I pick you instead. 
God, I choose you instead. See, the problem is if we keep praying, God, take the bad things away from us, we keep focusing on the bad things. We keep, we keep calling out to the things that we don't want, and we're giving power to those things. But when we say, God, I choose you, God, I pick you, what we begin to do is lift up the God who is bigger than all of our problems, who is greater than our biggest struggles. And I say, God, I pick you instead. I don't need this thing because, God, what you have for me is way better. God, I pick you today. And even though I can't see it, even though I don't understand exactly what you're doing, I'm reminded that the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. So even though I can't see it, I'm going to pick God. Because even though I'm familiar with Egypt, what Egypt has is not what God has for me. So I got to do something different. See, I'm going to tell you today, don't forget the promise that God has spoke over your life. Don't forget what God wants to do in your life. Make it an everyday decision to say, I pick you, Jesus. I pick what you have. Don't forget the promise. Point two today is this. Trust that God fights for you. Trust that God fights for you. See, we have to trust that God fights for us, that God is on our side. See, the Israelites, they were so used to slavery. They were so used to things not going the way they wanted that they began to think they were in this thing all by themselves. And I don't know about you, but I felt that way before. Things didn't go the way I want. Another issue didn't go how I hoped. Another thing, another problem, another dilemma. Man, maybe I am in this thing all by myself. But I want you to know that's the farthest thing from the truth. That God is with you every step of the way. The Bible declares that God is even near the brokenhearted. So even in our lowest season, God is closest to us. See, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who placed each star and handmade every creature in the sea, that same God picks you and loves you. And that same God who created all creation says, you are my best creation. And I fight for you. I pick you. Trust that God fights for you because it's in the middle that we can feel not safe and uncertain but it's also in the middle that we can experience how God is for us, that God fights for us. Check out Moses' response to the people. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, which that's for someone in here right now. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. See, God fights for us. And I just want to encourage someone in here today where you've been fighting, you have things going on in your life, God is fighting for you. God is with you. Stand firm in the promises of God. Now, now the Bible said that. Pharaoh changed his mind. And then he gathered 600 chosen chariots, additional to his normal army. See, Pharaoh is, is bringing his biggest and baddest army to get the, the Israelites back. But we got to remember something. These are just a bunch of slaves. They don't, they don't have army knowledge. They don't have spears and swords and shields to protect them. They're just slaves. They're defenseless. See, what happens in life is when we make the decision to move towards God, the enemy will try to come with his biggest and baddest pursuit to get you, to try to stop you from moving forward. But you need to know something today, that the Bible declares that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us, and that whoever believes in him shall never perish. Because when Jesus died on the cross three days later, he got back up again, meaning that we can get back up again in life. And so when the enemy enemy tries to pursue you, the enemy must bow down to the finished work of the cross. Oh, I'm preaching too good for you right now. Come on. Where the faith at in here, man? See, see, when, when, when the enemy tries to pursue you, he can't do nothing to you. He's been defeated. The enemy has been defeated. And you've got a whole bunch of people fighting a battle that's already been won. Why do you keep fighting a battle that God said, I took that victory already. I gave you the power to defeat that. You just got to move towards me. Stop fighting things that have already been defeated. 
you got to know that God fights for you, that God's for you. See, the enemy can try to scare you, come against you, but it can't hurt you. See, trust that God fights for your family. Trust that God fights for your, for your dreams and your finances. Trust that God is for you. See, point one today is this. Don't forget the promise. Point two, when we're caught in the middle, trust that God is fighting for us. And my third and final point today is this. Your promise is right in your hand. Your promise is right in your hand. So, church, can I just be real today? Can I be real? If I can't be real at church, where can I be real at? See, sometimes I hear people talk about faith, right? I hear people talk about trust in God. And it's always like this, yeah, you just got to have faith. Just go for it. Take a, a giant leap. You can do it. Like, man, that sounds inspirational and, and all, but sometimes when I hear people talk about faith, I find myself feeling kind of disqualified because I don't have faith like that sometimes. Sometimes I look forward and all I see is an ocean that I can't cross and I know I can't swim. And I look behind me and I see things that I used to do that I don't want to do no more. But they keep calling me. And because I'm familiar with it, I keep thinking about going back. See, maybe you relate to that today. I say, man, I'm trying. I'm trying to move forward. But I'm in the middle. I'm caught. I'm caught in the middle. I don't know what I'm going to do this time. I don't know how to move forward. See, to have faith is to have complete trust and confidence in someone or something. Fear. To have fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain. See, it's in the middle that we face faith and fear. Imagine being Moses for a second. And I know he came across real confident when he said God's going to fight for him, but he still has 600 of the best troops in the biggest empire against his back right now. Fear has to come in. Fear is evident. But also, there was this faith in him that was at war with that fear. Faith is complete trust and confidence in someone or something. Fear is the belief that someone or something is dangerous. It's in the middle that we make a decision to trust that either God is good or God is dangerous. It's when we're in the middle and we're faced with these life decisions. Do I trust that he's really good? Or maybe I'm afraid that he's really not good. But check out what God says to Moses. And I love this so much. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. And I love this because it's not like God saying, don't pray to me, don't talk to me. But what God is saying is, just because Egypt changed their mind doesn't mean I changed my mind. Just because Egypt tried to come at you doesn't change the plan I have for you. Israel, just move on. Just keep pressing. Just keep stepping. Just keep reaching. Just keep going after the promises of God on your life. You just got to move. Israel, move on. Vineyard, move on. Child of God, move on. Don't allow Egypt. Don't you for a second think Egypt can change the promises that God has made for your life. Egypt, God does not listen to Egypt. Egypt bows down to God. And just because something changes doesn't mean God changes. And then check out the next thing he says. God says to Moses, raise your staff and stretch out your hand. Okay. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea, and the waters will divide. God says, raise your staff. Your staff 
use what's in your hand. Use what's in your hand. Remember the story I started off with? Jesus tells a man whose right hand was deformed to stretch it out. Moses stretches out his hand over the sea. The man's right hand was deformed. Now in Hebrew culture, your right hand represented the hand of blessing. The Bible declares that Jesus sits at the right hand of God. That when a father would bless his firstborn son, he would put his right hand on the head of his son and pass down the family blessing. See, his right hand was deformed, which means his hand of blessing was deformed. And the man probably walked around his whole life a little bit like this. And he hid his right hand. He hid his blessing. And I wonder how many times in our lives, because of insecurity, because of doubt, because of unfortunate events, that we hide what God has for us. Now the man is standing before Jesus and he's caught in the middle. He's literally caught in the middle of blessings or death. Literally caught in the middle. The religious leaders are trying to catch Jesus performing an act on the Sabbath. And here is this man who wants to promise, but he's afraid of the journey. And when we read the story, and it's funny, sometimes when we read the Bible, we kind of just read over things. And the Bible said that Jesus told him to stretch out his hand, and he stretched out his hand, and his hand was healed. And we kind of read, it's like, okay, he just stretched it out. It's like, oh, it's about time, Jesus. I've been trying to get this thing worked on for a minute. See, but when I read the story, I don't read it like that. He has people right behind him that are ready to take him out. But he has this thing inside of him that says God is good. Says that Jesus is good. And I think for some of us, faith isn't just his outgoing personality. For some of us, faith may look a little bit like this. Oh, it's healed. See, faith may just be a stretch towards Jesus. We may just have to move our imperfections towards the perfection of God. See, when we move our imperfections, when we move our weaknesses, we discover that God is strong. When we move our, our worries, we discover that God is for us. When we move our fears, we discover that God has enough faith for the both of us. We just have to stretch our hands towards him. And see, Moses walks to the edge of the Red Sea with his staff in his hand. And, 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 and for me, it kind of makes me think of my swim lessons. It kind of makes me think of being on my back with my hips up and my head back. And my arm's looking like a crazy man. And I'm in the middle of the eight feet. The four feet is over there, the 12 feet. And I'm tired. My willpower is almost gone. I got water in my ears. And all of a sudden, I hear my coach say, Jacob, remember you can swim. Remember you can swim. Just keep moving. Just keep swimming. Just keep going. Who said you can't swim? And now she's telling me this. I'm like, oh yeah, I can swim. And I'm just moving, and I'm moving, and I'm moving, and I'm tired, and I'm hurting, and my arms are getting weak. But guess what? The eight feet is not my destination. The eight feet is not where I can be. So God said, I'm going to move you even farther when you feel like your weaknesses are getting too much. Remember that I put what you have right in your hands, that you can move forward right now. And guess what? I got to that 12 feet, right? I got to the 12 feet. And when I think about Moses, he has this stick in his hand. And God says, just use what's in your hand. And he's like, you really want me to use this stick again? He's like, all right. He walks to the edge of the sea. And I can even picture the Israelites being like, 
Oh, man, here come Moses again with the stick. <laughs> Let's just pack up our stuff. Let's go back to Egypt right now, always playing with that stick. And Moses gets to the edge. Gets to the edge. I can't tell you how many times I've been at the edge of God's promise and I decided to go back to Egypt. There's too many people who keep walking up here and looking and saying, oh, I guess I'll just go back to Egypt instead. Egypt doesn't have what God has for you. Stop giving in to Egypt. Stop caving into that. He walks up to the edge. And I don't think it was like the movies. I don't think it was like the, Moses' water part. Look at me now. I don't think it was like that. I think it was a little bit more like. <sighs> oh, shoot, it worked. <laughs> and the waters begin to split open. See, we have to learn the posture of moving towards God. We have to learn the posture of stretching out to God because here's the crazy part about the man who reached out his hand towards Jesus. Jesus did nothing. Jesus didn't pray. Jesus didn't touch the man. Jesus didn't jump up and down and yell at him. Jesus just stood there. And it kind of makes me think of this verse in Ephesians. It says, for it is by grace that you have been saved. Grace, undeserved favor, undeserved love. A grace so good that God loves us even though we fall a thousand times, he picks us back up again. It is for by grace that you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. See, See, in this moment, Jesus is just, he's just like, just move to me. Just move after me. Yeah, I know you don't have all the answers, and I know things are still confusing, and I, and you, and I know things didn't go the way you thought, but just move towards me. Church, are we going to move towards Jesus? Are we going to believe that if we stretch out, God, here's my family. God, here's my finances. Here's my marriage. Here's my dreams. Here's everything I have. And with faith, God, today I move towards you. With faith, I stretch out because you are that good. The Bible says that the seas parted and the Israelites walked through. And guess what it says next? The Egyptians that they saw that day, they never saw again. I want someone in here to know today, you came in with Egypt. You walked in with Egypt. When you leave, you'll never see that Egypt again. Freedom in the name of Jesus. See, you just got to move forward. You just have to stretch towards him. Because when we're caught in the middle, when we're caught in the middle of blessings and curses, life and death, just move towards Jesus. And I promise you, it won't disappoint you. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. God, here we are in the middle. I even feel right now there's some people they're in the middle of trying to discover what's next for my life. What am I supposed to do next? Who am I supposed to help? How am I supposed to better this world? And you don't know what to do. And I feel like God is just saying very clearly, move towards him. Just step towards him. He holds your future in his hand. There's some people in here who are in marriages that are 
falling apart. And you're caught in the middle. You're caught in the middle of trying to work things out or maybe just throw in the towel. And God says, move towards me. Just move towards me. With faith and with your fear, move towards me. Yeah, and there's some parents even in here whose kids aren't making the best choices right now. And God's just saying, move towards me. Parent, move towards me. I fight for your family. You may be in here today and you're like, Pastor Jacob, that was a good message and all, but I don't know this Jesus you talk about. I never made a decision to trust him. If you're in here today and you want to make a decision to trust Jesus with your life, I was going to pray a prayer. And right where you are in your chair, you can pray this prayer with me. I'm not going to call you out or ask you to come up front or anything like that. Just right where you are in your chair. If you want to pray this prayer to trust Jesus with your life, just pray after me. Now, maybe some people in here who did trust Jesus and you got caught in the middle and you went the other way. And God's saying, trust me again. If you want to pray that prayer with me, you can join me too, okay? Just say, Jesus, I give you my life. I trust you. Forgive me for my mistakes. Overwhelm me with your grace. Today, I follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to this week's message. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to write us your story at amen at vmchurch.com and we'll see you next week.